Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBabeCrochet.com and you've come to video number four. This is the final video of the Colorful Cables Throw. If you are coming to this video for the very first time and haven't seen videos one, two, or three, please check in the video description below and I would recommend that you start at the very beginning and then you'll understand what we're doing in video number four. For those of you who've been following along, thank you for being so faithful and um, welcome back. And I hope, like I said in the last video, I hope we're still friends. Um, these are some of my very old friends, these stitches here. And, um, and I want to do whatever I can to make you successful at just learning how glorious this crochet um, craft can be. Well, anyway, in this last video, we are going to learn how to crochet the basket weave stitch. And I'm sure you're going to find this very easy compared to what we've already done. It's very similar. And after that, we're going to do more low front ridge and we're going to do the arrow stitch and more low front ridge. After that, we are going to do perimeter rounds, which are actually just simply crocheting single crochets around. But I'll show you exactly how I did mine. Of course, you are totally free to change up the border into anything that you would like. But I do have, but the instructions in the, in the um, pattern do include the colors that I used and, and so forth. But, um, and I also, I'm gonna show you, I ended my afghan with the neural stitch all the way around. Now, if you wanted to do something different, definitely feel free to do that. I also have added information in this video on how to block the end because it's not uncommon for there to be a lot of curling um, on the end. And if, if that is your situation like it is it was with me, um, I do have a solution for you and I have some, some um, really cool tools and I'll put the video links, or I'm sorry, the, um, the links in the video description below should you be interested in any of these items that I used to block my um, afghan. Well, let's go ahead and finish this project. Okay, before we complete that last single crochet, we're gonna go ahead and bring in color number one. It's been a long time since we've used this color. Go ahead and pull that through. Make sure that you have a nice, generous strand here. And then we're gonna go ahead and chain two, one, two. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the green color and catch my hook here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn. After that chain two, I'm gonna go ahead and work a half double crochet in the first stitch. It's really important that you work that in the front and the back, and this is um, essential to maintaining our stitch count. Now we're ready to begin in the next stitch, and we're gonna work four front post double crochets two three and four again we're working them around the body of the stitch not through the top loops okay so after we do that we're going to work four back post double crochets so that's one two, and three, and four. I'm having a trouble with my hook today. All right, so now after we do that, we're just gonna repeat that all the way across. Four front post double crochets, and four back post double crochets. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. At the end of the row, we're gonna work a half double crochet in the last stitch, just like that. All right, now that's row one of the basket weave. Now we're gonna work rows two, three, and four are gonna be worked the same way. So let me show you row number two, and you're gonna repeat this three times. Okay, after the chain two, we're gonna work a half double in that first stitch 
just like that. And then we're going to work four front post double crochets and notice that you're working them over the stitches that are already front post double crochets. And you guessed it, we're going to work four back post double crochets over the next four stitches. Okay, so let me do that. I'll show you. Um, I'll do this a little bit more. So then four, this is the repeat, four front post double crochets. And then four back post double crochets. It's one of my favorite stitches. I love the way this comes out. Okay, so go ahead and finish row two and then go on and repeat this for rows three and four. At the end of each row, we should be working a half double crochet in that last stitch. And this is what you should have. Let's go ahead and turn with the front side facing. And this is what we have four rows, starting with four front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets. Row number five is where we're going to change the direction of these stitches. Um, where we worked front post, we're going to work back post, and where we have back post, we're going to work front post. Now what I'm going to show you here, we are going to do for the next four rows. Okay, chain two. Now, as I say that, um, we're going to do this for the next four rows, but the first row is where we're going to work opposite of what we see, but then in the three rows to follow that, um, we will be working in unison or um, doing the same as what we see. In other words, um, we start out with that half double crochet. As you can see, I have a knot here, and I'm just going to work that on through and that will be hidden into my work um, once I get to the point of hiding all these loose strands. Now we're going to start with four back post double crochets, two, three, and four, and then wherever you see the back post double crochets, you're going to do four front post double crochets. One, two, three, and four. So after we've completed this row, row five, when we work row six, seven, and eight, we will work a half double crochet in the first stitch, the half double, and then we're going to work four back post double crochets, four front post double crochets. Okay, so just be sure to start the next three rows following this row with the back post double crochets and everything should be fine. So what you're going to be doing is what you see here is actually going to look the same over here. Okay, so go ahead and finish those next four rows and make sure that when you end each row that you also end with a half double crochet. This is what you should have after eight rows of the basket weave. This is just one of my favorite textures. I think it has a nice rich look to it and it's very easy to do. Hopefully you're finding that that is the case. Well, let's go ahead and we're going to work four more rows and we're going to start with the half double crochet of course and then we're going to use four front post double crochet and then four back post double crochet. I'll do a few of these with you. Chain two, half double crochet in the first stitch and then again we are reversing what we see for this first of the next four rows. Front post double crochet in the next four stitches. That'd be three and four. And then now we're going to work four back post double crochets. One, two, three, and 
two, three, and four. And then that is going to repeat four front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets. Go ahead and do that all the way across. At the end of the row, don't forget that you're going to have to work that half double crochet in the last stitch. And then chain two, turn after that half double crochet. Just repeat this, and this is three more times, starting with those four front post double crochets. Okay, go ahead and finish the next four rows. After 12 basket weave rows, this is what you should have. Now we're going to chain one, and we're going to work a single crochet in each stitch across, just working through the top loops like we normally would. And this is going to help to discontinue the basket weave stitch by, by making these, uh, the change in the front post, back post stitches. It's going to help take that wave out of it because we're going to want the stitches to be a little straighter. Um, so we're going to work one row of single crochet and have the next color ready at the end of this row because we're going to change to another color after this row. Okay, now at the end of the row, we have one more stitch to make and I'm gonna go ahead and change colors as I complete this stitch and we're going back to color number nine, which is the light blue. In my case, if you're following along with my color scheme. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and chain one turn and we are going to work another row of single crochets all the way across. So just work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. Okay, this is what you should have after working that row of single crochet. Now what we're going to do here, I'm going to give you an assignment and we're going to go back in our throw to these rows right here. I still have to hide my strings as you can see. Um, we're going to go back and we're going to work the, the two rows of the low front ridge. Then we're going to work the two rows of the arrow stitch, followed by two more rows of single crochet, and then a row of the two more rows of the low front ridge, rows one and two. So that's two, four, six, eight rows there. Make sure I get it on camera. So go ahead and work those eight rows in the light blue color. After you do that, we are going to be very close to starting on the perimeter rounds. At the end of row two of that low front ridge, this is where we are in this particular row. Go ahead and give it a chain and give it a tug. We're gonna go ahead and end this color and we are effectually done with all of these patterns, all of these stitches that we've worked on so hard. Now it's time for us to prepare for the perimeter rounds that are going to be worked all the way around the perimeter of this throw. But before we can do that, we have what seems like a million and a half, but it's really not that many. Um, but it is uh, quite a few of these loose strands to hide. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. I'll go ahead and start with this one. Now some of you may have chosen to knot your yarns together, which is fine. I actually prefer that. And some of you may have chosen to not do that, but to just weave them in. Either way, this is the time to do that. Um, also keep in mind that as you weave them in, that we are going to have a perimeter round going all the way around this. So some of this is, most of this is going to be hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this around and I'm just going to run it under under these single crochets just like this here I'll just do a few of these here go ahead and bring that around make just making sure it's not showing forth on the other side and that's the other thing I should tell you make sure you hide these with the back side facing you um, okay, and the other thing is, as you hide these colors, I know it's, well, let me go ahead and finish this and show you what I like to do. Just bring it under, and that, that's brought under one, two, three, four, six, seven stitches. That should be fine. 
and, and go ahead and pull back on it a little bit and very carefully cut the yarn make sure that you're only cutting the excess yarn and you're not cutting your stitches and that is hidden you're not gonna see that again um, I'm not trying to be Captain Obvious here but you're gonna need to hide the yarns that are the similar color you know, in with the stitches that are of that same color like for example here um, this was not knotted but I'm gonna go ahead it just makes me feel better to knot this again if you have a if you prefer not to do that and prefer to just weave them into the colors the way they are that that is perfectly fine this is just gonna make me sleep a little bit better tonight if I have these knotted and like I said before this is going to be um, crocheted over with other stitches so obviously I'm going to hide let me go ahead and hide this one just to show you how well these knots will disappear okay so I'm gonna work the green thread obviously under some of the green stitches and I'm, I'm actually gonna work bring them up into some of the stitches here And maybe bring them across a little bit. Okay, I think that's going to be good. And you can always bring them back if you wanted to. to give it a little added measure. Make sure you give it a tug. You clip very carefully. Okay, and then I'm going to hide this color under the similar colors. I know I'm taking a long time on this, but um, there may be some of you out here who's never worked on a project quite like this. Let's go ahead and bring this under here. Okay. Now obviously you can see this, but once we get this hidden, let's just go ahead and run this under. Okay, and there you go. All I gotta do is trim it and then we're done. So go ahead and do this to all the loose strands in your project. Whew, that was a lot of strands to hide. Now we're ready for color number 10 and I'm using this light gray color. I'll go ahead and give you the dialogue or the, the color number is 203. Okay, so now we're ready to begin the perimeter rounds. Now we're ready to work the perimeter round. I'm gonna go ahead and start in the foundation round, make my slip knot and join with the chain. Now we are simply going to work single crochets around the entire perimeter. I'm going to go ahead and start in the foundation chain and if you have a hard time finding where to work your stitches, just find where that single crochet was going the opposite direction and just insert one single crochet per stitch. After crocheting all the way across to the first corner, go ahead and give it a chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work a single crochet in that same space to form a corner. And every time you get to the chain two corner, you're going to crochet a, this is on the following rounds, you're going to crochet a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in this space right there. Okay, so now this is the tricky part. We're going to be working along the row ends. And as you well know, these row ends, every time you come to a different pattern stitch, are going to be a little different. Okay, I'm going to give you a stitch count that is an optional stitch count. I'm going to write it right down here. I'll tell you how many single crochets it took me to go all the way across to the next corner. Um, you do not have to stick exactly to that number and let me tell you why. Everybody's crocheting style may vary slightly. Um, some of you may crochet a little tighter and some a little looser than I am right now. Um, so what I'm suggesting you do is crochet across these rows, the, the row ends rather, and you want to do it in a way that it appears even. And what I mean by that is the stitches should look, you know, reasonably even. 
not all bunched up too much and certainly not spread apart too far. Okay, you want it to be as even as possible. And because, like I said, your uh, crochet style may vary slightly from mine, you might have, you know, a few more or a few less stitches than I do across each end. And that actually is fine. This is the important thing though, whatever number you come up with across these row ends on one side, you want to duplicate it coming up the opposite side so that the blanket will be stitch by stitch the same size on both sides. Of course, when you work across the other um, end of the blanket, you're just going to be working in each single crochet across and that stitch count should already be established for you. It's just one stitch in each stitch. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this first perimeter round. And just like I did in this corner here, every time I come to a corner, I'm going to turn 90 degrees, chain two, and then I'm going to work another single crochet in that same space with the last single crochet um, going, let's say, you know, the other, other on the other side where that other side was. Okay. After working along the ends of the rows, I want to give you the stitch count. I have approximately 190 stitches on each side. If it's not exact, if it's just off by a couple of stitches, it really is not going to be a deal breaker um, if that makes it easy for you. But approximate number 190 along the row ends for me. And of course, one stitch in each stitch across for both the top and the bottom of the afghan. So go ahead now, we're going to chain two and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. And then we're going to do another row of this color number 10. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in that first stitch and I'm going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Notice that the front side is still facing and we did not turn, I want to, um, or I'm going to crochet my single crochets with the front side facing for all of these rounds. So go ahead and work at round number two with the same color, color number 10. When you get to the chain two spaces, we're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in the chain two spaces. So go ahead and work that second round all the way around. Okay, I wanted to show you where I am on my border. I have or, or the perimeter round. I have one round to finish. Um, so from the beginning here, we worked two rounds of the gray, which is color number 10 in the color scheme that I'm using. And then I worked one round of the yellow, which is color number six. And then one round of the green or the sage color, which is color number two. And then one round of the, the light orange which is color number five and then finally one round of the light blue which is color number nine now there are a couple options for working this last round i mean if you like the way this looks as is i mean you can stop here this is really up to you um, i'm going to end with the darker orange color okay i've got a lot of numbers flying this is number color number seven um, that I'm returning to. I just thought that this would be a nice color to end the final round. Now I'm going to work the knurl stitch all the way around the perimeter. Now this is the stitch that is worked in the opposite direction. Um, remember we did a couple of rows of these in the project. Now if you do not like that stitch or if you want to do something else, feel free to do it at that th at this point or you may even just want to do another round of single crochet. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to work the knurl or the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. The, the, the stitch has all those names. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and join. Okay, so I'm going to be working, let's see, I'm going to be working around this direction. I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and start in the first stitch to the right and just work the reverse single crochet all the way around. 
go ahead and get back to the viewfinder. And when you get to the corners, I would work three stitches in the corners and then continue working in the top loops of the stitches as you go around. So go ahead and finish this round and I will show you um, the finished work. I've worked the knurl stitch all the way around and I just completed working three knurls in that chain two space. Now to finish this round, all we need to do is go back into the first place where we worked our first knurl stitch and then work a reverse slip stitch. So don't, um, let me do that for you again. I'll show you how to do that again. So we just insert the hook, pull up a loop, and then pull the loop through, give it a little tug, and now give it a chain and pull tight. And get your trusty scissors and cut the strand and pull through. So after doing that, we're going to um, simply trim, cut, the, cut our strand here, and then we're going to hide the two loose strands. Okay, now we need to do a little bit of blocking with this edge that's curling up. The rest of the afghan with the other stitches I don't think are going to need blocking so much, but I am going to just focus on the edge here. Now I am using these blocking mats and let me show you, they do go together, kind of like a big puzzle piece. They are 12 inches by 12 inches. Um, very easy to use, very, very soft, nice and thick. Um, if this is something you're interested in investing in, I do have an affiliate link right below in the video description, should you be interested. Um, but you're not, you're not required to do this. You can also, um, make do with maybe what you have at home, but, um, this just makes it a lot easier. I'm also using a set of these blocking pins. Um, you can also use just, just regular needles. And I also have a pack of just regular pins like this that I, I may use. But right now I'm just going to use these because these are a lot faster. And what we do with these is I'm just going to pull out the edge and then push down in into the block just like this. Making sure that this edge is nice and straight as I go. Okay, I'm going to come do this here. And these are also really wonderful for blocking sweater pieces. Okay. And so we're just going to block, basically straighten this out the way we want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and, and work on that. Now I'm going to just take a bowl with clean water and a clean dishcloth. And I'm going to just simply dampen the area that I am blocking just like this. Now if you have a spray bottle you can put water in that and that would actually probably work better. I am away from home at the moment and I don't have that type of supply or else I would use it. Also one other thing about these pins that I'm using is they are not supposed to rust which is good because um, the last thing you want is, is to have your pins leave rust marks on your blocked items. So um, just go ahead and do this. And then you're going to just need to leave it sit until it dries. Um, as I'm recording this video, it's in the winter time and very, very cold out, which means the air inside the house is very dry. So it's not going to take long for this to dry and once it does I just simply remove these pins and this side should remain straight. Now I'm just going to do one side at a time because of the size of this particular um, project. Um, but if you have a huge area that you can um, um, use and you can probably do this all at one time. Alright so I hope that helps you with understanding a little bit more about blocking. Now, if you use other yarn other than the acrylic that is recommended, um, 
you might want to just consult the manufacturer's recommendations of, of how to do your blocking. If you've made it this far, I just wanted to thank you for sticking with me through all these videos, through more than 14 different stitches and um, a lot of different colors. And I hope you didn't mind too much all those hiding all those loose strands, but believe me, it's worth it um, once you complete your afghan. I would love to see your completed project should you get a chance. You can always email them to me at bonniebay at me.com or you can post them freely on my Bonnie Bay Crochet YouTube, I'm not sorry, a Bonnie Bay Crochet Facebook page. I wish there was a way to post them on YouTube, but there really isn't. But if you want to send me a, a picture of your finished project to BonnieBayAtMe.com, I'm going to try to collect these and maybe put a small slideshow together just to show everybody in the future. Well, anyway, that's all we have. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe and thumbs up and notification bell. You know the routine. And I just want to wish you all of God's blessings. Bye-bye.